Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming to listen to my presentation. I'm Bin Xiao, and I'm a PhD student from National University of Singapore. Um, my supervisor is Professor Bing Shenghe, and we are working on this interesting topic named When Crypto Economics Meet Graph Analytics and Learning. Crypto economics blending blockchain technology with many economic principles and have fostered a lot of decentralized system. As we can see from the left figure here, it shows a total market capital of all cryptocurrencies from 2013 to, to nowadays. We can see a large amount of uh, market cap have been get gained in multiple cryptocurrencies. And from the right hand side, we can see it shows an overview of various crypto projects and assets that have been developed in the DeFi ecosystem. And each of them are actually characterized with specific economic rules and incentives. On the other hand, graphs have played an important role in many economics and social studies. To illustrate, graph is a common data structure, include node and edge, in which edge are used to represent the relationship among the objects, which are the nodes on the graph. When we consider the transactions of cryptocurrencies, it's very intuitive for us to model them as a big transaction graph in which nodes are the account on the blockchain, which can be addressed, which can be uh, the account also can be the smart contract, and the transactions uh, can be modeled as edge in the graph. That's why we've already seen there are some studies that they have used graph analytics and learning method to study various areas in crypto markets, including network effect, and also there are studies uh, related to decentralization and uh, tokenomics, and also there are some studies on fraud detection. However, we see a big limitation here is that most of th those work, they have focused on some major cryptocurrencies, mostly on Bitcoin and Ethereum. However, this will lead to some problem. Even though that we know Bitcoin and Ethereum, they are the most popular cryptocurrencies, they are also among the oldest ones. And if we only focus on them, we will meet some new trends, such as some newly developed NFTs or other tokens. And also, if we only focus on these two, it will lead some to, to some skewed insights, and our findings might misrepresent the entire crypto economics. That's why in our study, we propose uh, to learn about the interplay between crypto economics and graph learnings across the entire crypto world. So this will open many opportunities for us. Uh, I uh, summarize four here. Uh, the first one is network effect, in which we can use graph analysis and learnings to study about the correlations or inter uh, correlations between different crypto tokens. And second is decentralization, uh, in which we can use some graph metrics to quantify the centralization or decentralization of uh, different crypto tokens. And also we can use uh, some graph analytics to develop some tokenomics mechanism. And last but not least, we can also use some graph learning methodologies to detect different frauds on the crypto market, especially on those new trends and new markets. So this research will bring benefits to both the, our study of crypto economics and also our study of graph analytics and learning. First, from, crypt, from our study of crypto economics, for example, when we study the life cycle of various tokens, it may encourage us to develop some new graph metrics. And the other, on, on the other hand, we believe that from uh, applying some graph analytics and learning technology on the study of crypto economics, it can also help us to develop some systematic tokenomic frameworks. So before let's before uh, going too deep to our methodology, let's look at some related work. I also uh, summarized the related work from the four aspects that we're interested uh, that I discussed before. The first one is the network effect. Uh, for now, we've already seen that there are some studies that they underscore the significant uh, military influence among some cryptocurrencies, but most of them, they focus on only the top uh, five or six major cryptocurrencies. And there are some findings from them. For example, um, some of the cryptocurrencies can play the major role in the market, especially during some special period like COVID-19. 
And second, for decentralization, we've also seen there are some studies that they use graph metrics to quantify the centralization structure. Uh, within some cryptocurrencies and some selective uh, decentralized banks. And for tokenomics, we've seen there are some investigation of the dynamics of the market for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and a few studies have brought into ERC20 tokens, but most of them have only focused on some early stage of the market. And last but not least, for risk and fraud detection, we've actually seen a lot of studies. They apply graph-based technology to detect some fraud in Bitcoin and Ethereum, but very few studies have been seen in other chains, probably because of the lack of uh, in la uh, in enough labels. So uh, this limited uh, we think there are still a uh, great potential for us to uh, explore. But of course, uh, this study will have, have to face some challenge. Uh, I summarized three main challenge here. The first one is that we need to handle the dynamics and high volume transaction graphs. Second one is that our study need to handle the uh, heterogeneous graph because there are various types of uh, different address on the market. And also we need to handle the scarcity of labels. So we propose uh, three main approach to tackle this challenge. The first one is cross-chain spatial and temporal analysis. Second one is graph transfer learning. And third one is our innovative uh, graph of graphs, in which we can see from the figure that we like to model uh, the transaction of each token as a local graph, and then use a global graph to represent the relationship between uh, these tokens on the market. Our methodology can be um, divided into four st stage. In the first stage, we'll collect some data, including the transactions, the label cloud, and also we like to collect some market information and some information about the crypto projects, like the white papers. And with those data set, we, we will build uh, transaction graphs of individual crypto projects and also the relationships among the projects. And we'd also like to build some on-chain and off-chain matching graph to en enrich our data set. And then with the data and graph, we will build some platforms that enable feature engineering, some GNN operators, and also some evaluation metrics. With this platform, we can continue the study that I've uh, discussed before for these approaches. So for now, we've already started our work by building some uh, data set that related to crypto transactions and also NFT transactions. So. Uh, with this data set, I'd like to introduce some of our preliminary results. So our first study is to uh, study the life cycle of crypto assets, starting with some NFT collections. Uh, we like to study the how the NFT projects are grow from its development to growth, then to maturity and to decline. So our data set includes more than 500 NFT collections with at least 10,000 sales. And with these NFT collections, we build daily transaction graph for them. And then we explore some graph metrics to, to examine which graph metrics are the best one to demonstrate the life cycle of NFTs. Here we explore the number of edge, the number of node, and also some weighted edge uh, by the transaction volume. Our first finding here is that among those metrics, we believe that the number of edge actually are the best one to uh, describe the life cycle of NFT projects. Um, for the others, there are some limitations for them. For example, for weighted edge by volume, even though we believe that transaction volume are one metric that is widely used in many financial studies, we think it's not that suitable to use for NFT collection, especially for those no low price uh, item, because we've seen there are some cases, some uh, very high uh, transaction with very high value can uh, bring a great influence to the our measurement of the life cycle. However, it turns out that those high vol value can be a fraud case or some watch trading case. So we think weighted edge is not useful here. It's not that uh, useful here. And then for the number of nodes, we find that it can indicate the participant count. However, it failed to account for the extent of their engagement. For example, uh, there are some address on the market that have they participate in lots of transactions. If we only count the number of nodes, uh, it will miss their extent or their degree of engagement.
So with our um, with the number of edge as our metric, we then measure the average duration of each uh, stage in the life cycle. First, we measure the duration from the start of the project to its peak. And we find that the average time is about 17 days. And second, we measure the duration from peak to diminish. It's about 103 days. So we can see that uh, in total, in average, uh, there, the NFT collections in our data set can have a very short lifespan, actually only about four months. However, a closer look actually shows that more than 60% of the collections, they peak within two days. So this leads to our second uh, finding, is that we find life cycles of NFT collections follow very sharp and burst patterns. So after um, some uh, introduction of our initial work, I'd like to uh, conclude this presentation with a conclusion. Uh, so in this work, we introduce a novel method to explain or to examine the interplay between crypto economics, graph learnings, and analytics. And we like to leverage some graph uh, techniques, including spatial and temporal analysis, graph learning, and also graph of graph to understand the economics of the entire crypto universe. Our future work will focus on addressing the technical challenge and also some uh, realization of the technology that I've discussed today. So uh, thank you for listening.